You remember a couple of months ago I bought that 61 Sportster and one of the issues that I had with that bike is that the inside, the, the inside of the gas tank was just loaded with rust, crusty, thick, flaky rust. So I said, all right, this is a time to try out some rust removers. So I bought some vapor rust and I did a comparison between a vapor rust and vinegar and we did that video. And neither of them really did the job on that tank because the problem is the, the rust in the tank is so crusty and so just, you know, that it needs more than just that. So the solution, and as I've done in the past, is to fill the tank with nuts, bolts, you know, little things, right? Shake it around, break off the loose rust. The problem with that particular tank, though, is that the petcock, you got to take the petcock out when you do that. The petcock is, is like welded in place. So I had the tank braced up and I'm trying to get the petcock out and I see the paint start to crack around the petcock, which means it was about to tear the bottom of the tank out. And it has like a 50 year old paint job on it that I'm, I'm trying to maintain. So I says, all right, there has to be a better way. And then it dawned on me, I saw something, I saw something online, electrolysis. And I remembered, yes, electrolysis. It's a method used to pull rust off of metal. And it involves electricity. And that's really all I want to know about it. So then I, I turned to the professor. Yep. Who's, yeah, right, Mr. Electronics. And I says, can you come up with an electrolysis system for us that we could use here at the shop so that when we get stuff like, you know, that tank, and I'm thinking we, we hang this down into the tank, and oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Getting ahead of myself. So he says, uh, can you come up with a system that we can use here at the shop? He says, yeah, no problem. He says, can you explain it? Because I can't explain it. And usually when he starts talking, it's like a series of squeaks and clicks. You know, it happens really fast like that. But I said, can you slow it down so that the average person, the average human can understand exactly what's going on here? And you said, sure. Sure? Yeah. So here's our experiment. Here's, I picked up this absurdly overpriced tub over at Home Depot yesterday. And we have this rusty, crusty Chrysler water pump housing. And this is going to be our first experiment with this. Mm -hmm. So, explain what's going on. Okay. So the whole basic premise behind electrolysis is you're just doing the reverse of the reaction that rust actually does to iron, metal, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> to do that, you need a water bath and a chemical electrolyte, which that's what this stuff is. The recommended stuff to use is sodium carbonate, which is not sodium bicarbonate, it's not baking soda, it's washing soda. You can bake baking soda and turn it into washing soda, then it will just be baked soda, but it'll work. But this also improves swimmer comfort. Yes. So this was like $12 and there's six pounds of it, so it should be enough for us to do that block behind us too. The, the tub isn't big enough. The tub's not big enough. We'd have to get like a tote. All right. Well, if this but, works, I'll go get I'll go get a barrel. Sure. So, all right. But the so, basic idea is just that you've got electricity has to flow from one part to another. It will, you know, break the rust off and actually take it from the rusty part here and deposit it on this piece of leaf spring that we welded a bolt to, and we're turning this into our sacrificial anode. So sacrificial anode. Yes. Explain that. Basically, this thing is going to collect all of the rust that's coming off of this and as the electricity flows through the bath. So, this is going to be positively charged. Okay. The reaction that you get with this stuff basically ends up, it, you end up with negatively charged and positively charged ions in the water. as It's, it's chemistry. There's science happening. This is happening. future science, right. Yeah. But basically, this is going to be charged one direction that's going to be charged a different direction. We know that electricity flows from positive to negative. In this case, you're actually going the opposite direction. So this is going to be negative. That's going to be positive because you're taking the negative ions that are going to be in the bath are going to suck this stuff off and deposit it onto there. That's the basic gist of it. I tried to read a white paper, but I got confused. How does it know when to stop at just the rust? You're not going to end up with anything beyond just bare metal. 
Okay, so, so it won't eventually disintegrate the part. It should not. I can't imagine how long you'd have to leave it for that to happen, but you wouldn't want to pay the electric bill. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, and why do we have three wires on here instead of just one? Uh, I stripped this out of an electrical extension cord, okay. and um, the end was bad, so I decided to use it for this. And but why do three instead of one? That more current, more better. Desire. Okay, you just know. to make it more better. It's sure. no, no specific reason. Not really any specific reason. The only thing you might have to worry about is this is copper wire. It might actually end up disintegrating a little bit in the bath because of the reaction, but okay. we'll see. So. Well, yeah, it's an experiment. Yeah. We, we experiment here so they don't have to. Yes. But when uh, went in his basement, Yeah. dug out this Stole fully... my dad's battery charger that doesn't turn off. Yeah, as soon as you plug it in, it's on. So we got to yeah. set this bath up and let her start cooking. This will burn your house down. All right, now, now, specifically on the battery charger. Yeah, you have to use a dumb battery charger. Yeah. You can't use a float charger or any of those things that have any kind of circuitry built in. Because they'll just... It'll think that it's shorted out and it'll just shut itself off. Okay, stupidest battery charger you can get. Is the yeah. best battery charger. You just want a dumb one. You want like a slow charge? Slow charge, yeah. 2 amps, 12 volts. 6 volts, you can run a little bit more amperage if you want, but you don't matter. Right. So. so, what time is it right now? Uh, 5.15. It is 5.26 on the dot. Uh, I'm a little off. All right, so we'll call it, we're going to call it 5.30. So, we're going we're gonna to drop the stuff here yeah. in at 5.30. And we'll check it again. Mm. Hour two. Okay, we'll, we'll check it. We'll check it every hour. Okay. Okay. And we'll see what it looks like. Sounds good. Okay. So, go ahead. Set this thing. All right. So, bath. Oh, come back. I'll just leave that one like that, so it doesn't. This is not exactly the most. Uh, uh, there we go. So the thing is, you actually want this a little bit close to the anode because the closer it is the better it's going to flow so oh, stuck. and then this thing will eventually need to be flipped over because you're going to end up getting more rust removed on one side of it than the other because the one side that's going to have the least resistance is where it's going to come from okay interesting. so now did we say what the what the mixture is the solution this is just sodium carbonate no, 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 we you did use that. um What's the ratio? It's about one tablespoon per gallon. One tablespoon per gallon. That was what I found on the farmer forums. So, okay. Yeah, there's a couple other compounds you can use instead of this stuff. Some guys recommend using trisodium phosphate, which is TSP. It's like deck cleaner. Okay. I haven't tried that. I couldn't find any. I wanted to try some so we could do it, but we got this because it was available. So. Right. Now one other question: We're doing this outside. Yes. Because I said yeah. to you, I said, you set it up however it's going to be set up. Why are we set up outside? Uh, we're setting it up outside because this reaction is going to create hydrogen gas bubbles. Boom! And that, yeah. Okay. Tiny Hindenburg. Don't burn your house down. Yep. Do it outdoors. Don't do it in your garage. So. Does your dad know you stole his battery charger? He'll find out by the time he sees this. Okay. So. All right. So, negative went to the part here. Yep positive is going to this and as soon as we plug this sucker in we are on manual 12 volt 2 amp we should see bubbles here let the experiment begin throw the switch igor all right well that's it i guess it's done it's it's perfect so are we going to sit here and can we watch the rust you actually? should you should there's bubbles is there there's bubbles. This oh, yeah, soup. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh wow. This soup is gonna turn completely brown. It it's kind of bubbling. kind of already is, actually. You can see the outline of the Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It is cool. wisping. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it's wisping out. I can see it. I've never actually done this. This is cool. Yeah, the, the it's like it's Starting to get a little intense there. Yeah, you see the bubbles. Yeah, this are, is the bubbles are orange. Now is it? Is this? No, I don't feel a thing. It's two amp. Yeah, it's okay, two yeah. Amps. Yeah. If you turn it up to twelve, we probably get more bubbles, but yeah, I'd probably turn it up to twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah crank it All up. Right. All right. Oh, is it on? Is it on jump start or slow charge? It's on slow charge. It's oh. on manual. Oh, put on jump start. No. Well, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, put on jump start. Let's see what happens. 
it might blow one of these things. We'll see. I mean, you want to try it? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Oh, well, that was uneventful. Well, uh, it's just no, doing the thing. Is, oh, wait, hold on. I know it is bubbling up. You can already see the color of the leaf spring turning. <laughs> I'm gonna, you I'm see gonna, the side of it? I'm going to pull yeah. this bug out of here. I felt bad for the thing. It's getting cooked. Okay. Yeah, you see what's happening with the leaf spring here? All of the crust is getting attracted to the spring. Oh, yeah, look at this. It's green. That's probably what's left of whatever paint is underneath that rust. Oh, okay. Because this process will take all of the paint off of the part. Are we just going to leave it on jump start? We can. I don't think that's good for the charger. It's probably not. No. We'll put it, probably put, put it, it down on, to 12. Put on, yeah, yeah, put it on a 12 amp. It's going it's though. 12 amp won't hurt it. That's like a fast battery charge. Yeah. Wow, it's... So what I did with that leaf spring is I actually took it to the wire wheel first to try and get all the coating off of it. Because mm -hmm. I wanted as much bare metal as I could get. And that just basically took it down to the black finish that it had from the factory. So I put it on the grinder and took it down to as much bare metal as I could get off of it. And I made sure it had good electrical conductivity throughout because I just I just tested the ohms, you know. And I did multimeter. And I did the beautiful weld of the nut onto that. You know, That's epic, bro. It'll work. That's epic. Perfect. You can tell I've been welding for 30 years. Yeah. Who but, chose the, the wood? Oh, that was just that sitting was over just there. Laying around this is actually what something that I made for the truck. Oh, yeah. Because I was going to extendo this Tinto here. Oh. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a tent. Uh, it's so industrious. Uh, it happens when you're bored. Yeah, this happens when we're bored. I imagine a guy like you, everything in life is kind of boring. <laughs> a lot of it. Yeah. Are you saying I'm boring, John? No, you're exciting sometimes. Yeah, we've been through a lot. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, no, we're getting bubbles. We're getting see. Yeah, there's, there's definitely action happening around it. I mean, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing spectacular, but it's. No. But you can see what's happening to the spring here. I can see that green you were talking about. I can pull it up a little bit. Oh Look wow! That. Wow. That's what three minutes? About. Yeah. Don't let them touch. You'll have a bad time. Guys, it looks like if this if this works the way it's supposed to work, it looks like we found the ultimate form of rust removal. So yeah. just, let it just let her roll for. Uh, we're gonna let her yeah. roll and check it back at six thirty. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's fast forward into the future. The Wayne's World thing. Anyway. Okay, it's been half an hour, and you can see that this is really starting to turn murky. The bubbles are coming off the housing like crazy. And you're going to test something? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see, you know, make sure it's going good. I'm pretty close to here, and I mean, it's. I've got eight volts moving across the soup. So if I actually go straight to here and then into the water, I've got 10, but you're going to be wanting to look at the soup. Obviously, there's actually a way to, you can look at the amperage, but I think that is going to put out more than this thing will handle because it was free. So, okay. you know, it's working. It's All getting right. disgusting. It Let's smells do. like a swimming pool. A filthy swimming pool. Uh, every swimming pool in any app. That water pump is going to come out refreshed. Yes. Yeah. All right, so let's give it another half hour. Time to see. It's already starting to turn black in some spots. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Dude, I bet another half hour this thing looks good. Yeah. Try and move that around a little bit. Just don't let them touch. It'll just short the charger out and kind of have a bad time. Back again? I'm forklift certified. <laughs> okay. So we're doing this outside because of the hydrogen gas that's created during this process. But just to put everybody's mind at ease, it's not so much hydrogen gas that you got to freak out. So I'm putting a, I'm putting a flame directly over where it's bubbling. 
and you can see there's no boof. So this is safe. Don't do it inside because gases could accumulate someplace, but don't do it where you're freaked out that it's going to explode because that's not going to happen. It's been an hour, so let's let's get a look at what we got here. This thing, look at that. It's just grow. Look at look at the green. It's yeah, it's absolutely. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Oh wow. Okay, ah. that's amazing. That's amazing. So there's. It didn't even like leave a residue. No, it's just. Now basically, when this thing is done, it'll just be black. Yeah, there's some. Look, it, there's some. That is. That's all. That's after just an hour, and this thing had some heavy, heavy rust on it. You can definitely see that the side closest to the anode was getting better pre yeah. though, because that side's still basically the way it looked. Here, look, look at it's. It's got a mud rust. Rust mud. Rust mud. Yeah. That's amazing after an hour. Look at this right here. It's like it's like brand new metal. Will this paint wipe off? No, not quite. Not quite there yet. But that's all that's after just an hour. Yeah. Alright, let's let this thing cook. Let's flip it around the other way. Get it off the opposite side. That's why these leads are off. And don't plug me in yet. I want to make sure we're real close. But not quite touching. Okay. Good. Don't disturb. Get her back on. Let her keep cooking. All right, so I will show you the actual finished product here when we do the next update on Slag Hammer this week. I'll show you the finished product. But that, as far as I'm concerned, that's a game changer. Yeah. That, is, that is the most amazing thing. When I think of all of like the wire wheel pieces I've had to pick out of my face and eyeballs over the years, that's, that's a game changer. If you've got an hour, eh? And that, well, it's going to take more than an hour. I, you eh? can just let it roll while you're going to lunch, man. Yeah. Or just park or just it all while you day, yeah. Let it do let it do its thing overnight. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it's we just dropped it back in there, it's cooking a good now. That's just amazing. It's doing even more. Yep. It'll just keep going until it runs out. But like the good thing is there's no weirdness happening here, it's just a metal part. Right. So now, like you were saying, right? Yeah. That there are certain metals that you can't put in here. What I was reading is basically don't mix metals at all. Like obviously brass isn't really gonna rust. You're not gonna have an issue like that with aluminum because the actual, like the, the aluminum right. naturally creates an oxide layer. That's what the finish is. Like it's supposed to do that. Don't let things be mixed in here. And also do not use stainless as your sacrificial anode. Why? Because um, chemical off-gassing that's really bad for you can happen. Okay. So safety first. All right, so no stainless. Yeah, and just if you use have bare metal. If you have any any aluminum, brass, copper parts that are that are attached to the metal that you're looking, the iron or the steel that you're looking to get the rust off of, make sure that those pieces are off or they'll. I don't know what'll happen, but they say don't mix them. They say so, don't mix, and whatever they say is good enough for me. I mean, Dude, this is working really yeah. good, so I wouldn't That's want to screw amazing. it up. That's amazing. Look at the. Suit. It's still just yeah. And I wonder how many times you can reuse this mixture. I don't know. You could probably keep going until you eventually just end up with that sludge at the bottom. Well, I have another housing that I'll throw in here. Yeah. And this one is done. Yeah, we'll do the other one when the, this is finished. Yeah. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you got something out of that. That is amazing. The total cost to do this, now aside from the absurdly expensive Home Depot plastic tub, was, what, probably 50 cents? I mean, the whole thing was 14 bucks, 12, 14 bucks, and I used like maybe a cup. Yeah. And they're six pounds. So, just a few cents worth of this stuff water, a battery charger, some wires, and a sacrificial anode. Just crap you got laying around. That's awesome. I hope you got something out of that. And like cool. I said, I'll show, you this, I'll show you this housing on the next Slag Hammer update. Oh, and you're going to do on your channel. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
I'm going to take that 60, your sportser tank, the 61 tank. Right. That's going to be basically the inverse of this. Instead of having it sitting in the soup, we're going to put the soup inside the tank. Inside the tank. So we're going to have to be very careful about putting the anode in there so it doesn't touch and short everything out. But okay. I've got an idea for that. So we're going to do that and we're going to do the tank for the DR. Right. So that we can actually ride that thing because it runs. There's just not a gas tank on it. We ratchet strapped a Buell tank to it and made it go. So. All right. So and you're going to do that on your channel? Yeah. yeah. Daddy's Money Garage. Daddy's Money Garage. I'll be out here a couple days this week. So. All right, guys. Yeah. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow.